Aloha, my name is Melissa Olson. And I'm Dominique. And today we're going to talk about the article Supercharge Your Excel Sum Operations, Add Data by Up to 30 Criteria. It's in the Journal of Accountancy, July 2009 by J.D. Kern. And the main functions that we're going to go over are the sum if and the sum product. Um, using the sum if function, you're able to add the cells that you specify under a given condition. And we'll go over it further, but the three things you need are the range, the criteria, and then the sum range. And then the next function that we're going to use is the sum product, which it will give you the sum of the products that are in your range. And, and that's the three criteria that we need, but we'll go over it. We'll show you how to do it right now. Okay, so here we have our first exhibit, and the purpose of this is to manipulate the data faster and more effectively, and it also allows us to produce reports that we need in a quicker manner. And so let's say you're given your sales transactions, and there's different people, and if you notice, like Alice's name is listed twice, and Jim and things and things and so we want to be able to get the sum of all of their sales just by having it right here so if you click right there we're going to do what's called the sum if so if you type equals sum if and as you can see first it asks for the range and so what we're going to do is click on this range because we want it to look in this column and then type comma and then we want it to look for Alice's name so click right there and another comma and then the sum range that we're looking for is this column right here it's gonna so what it's saying is it's gonna look in this column find Alice's name and sum up all the ones that have her name and so just do an end parentheses and press enter and so that's Alice's sales all of hers added together and what you can do is you can retype it in to the next three if you want, or you can click back in here and make these absolute functions. If you just put a dollar sign in front of the A, and the three, and this A, and what this allows you to do is just to make these absolute references so that you can just drag it down and not have to type the formula. So just press enter, and then you can either drag this down or just double click it and there you have the sum for Jim and Samantha and Tom. And so as you can see that's a lot faster way to add them up without having to add them up yourself. And so now we're going to go into exhibit two and here we're given the data in the comms and wh what we want to be able to do is multiply these datas across on the rows and then also add all of them together. And so it's called the sum product that we're going to use. And so what we're going to do is equals sum product. And so array one, we're going to do the first column, comma, and then the second column, comma, and this last column, and then close parentheses. And so Looking at this, what it's actually doing is it's looking across the rows. It's going to take 1 times 4 times 7, and then 2 times 5 times 8, and 3 times 6 times 9, and then it's going to add all of those together. So that's why it's the sum of those products. And if you just press enter, it's 270. And so that was a lot faster way than having to just multiply those across and then add them together. And now we're going to go on to our Exhibit 3. Um, so here in this situation in Exhibit 3, um, let's say we want to use the same information displayed in Exhibit 1, but we added an extra column in, sales in column B where it shows the dates of sales for each salesperson. And so in this situation, we want to find um, the sales amount for each person according to the month of January, February, and March. 
and so to do that we would use the sum product function and we will first type equals sum product and it's similar to the exhibit 2 where we show how sum product works and here we would add a bit extra elements to it into the formula and so we'll explain the details after this and so first we would type two dashes and bracket we would have e4 uh, we'll have alice as equals to a Double dash again, open parentheses, three equals one and highlight the date column. third condition is highlighting the sales amount and so by looking at this formula we can see that the reason we put the double dashes because it acts like the true and false argument and so if you make it one dash it will have a one a negative one if it's true or a zero if it's false and so here in this situation we want to make it a positive number and that's why we add another negative sign to make it a positive one and so then it will look at the range A3 to A15 to continue to meet the second criteria the second criteria we will do the same thing with the double dashes and the reason we put 3 because we want to find the salesperson in the month of March so March is 3 and then the month we would put B3 to B15 for to meet the criteria. And if both conditions are met, then some product will proceed to the third criteria, which is the sales amount located in C3 to C15. And that will get you to the amount of 654 March. And let's say if we want to copy this formula and drag it to the other rows and columns for Alice, Jim, Samantha and Tom, we would just need to add the absolute value to the formula so that we can do things much faster. and now we can drag it the only changes we need to make for January and February is where the month we will need to change it to 2 meaning February and for January we will enter the month equaling to 1 and drag it down and so we'll have the sales by person for each month and we can produce that report in a major time 
And so in exhibit 4, we would want to just explain the reason behind using the two dashes and we'll take the example of Alice for sales in March of 650. And so in exhibit 4, um, the article shows that when you apply the, the two dashes, it means that they were using the true-false argument. And so if let's say that um, for the first sales transaction, if the first one it's referring to Jim, and so it's not referring to Alice, and that's why it's a false argument, and it would indicate as a zero. And then if the date in exhibit three is showing, it's not showing March, it would also indicate as a false argument, re resulting in a zero amount, and the sales would still follow in the C3 co column which is 500 so when you multiply 0 with 0 and 500 you will get a 0 amount and so that formula would be the same for each row and then we can see in rows 10 and 11 it met the criteria and so the reason it results as a 1 is because we added 2 dash if we just use one dash, it will result in a negative one. And so to make it a positive one, we would just multiply it with an another dash to make it a positive one. And so one multiplied by one multiplied with 300, we'll get with 300. And so these two would add up to the amount of 650. And that's the reason for using the sum products with the double dashes. So as we can see, we'll go back to Exhibit 3 and we can see that the amount for March is the same with 650 as we did in Exhibit 4. So once we are familiarized with using the sum product, we'll actually notice that we can use up to 30 arrays, not just in this situation, we only use the arrays, but we can use up to 30 arrays and have more complex analysis with this special function and so it's pretty simple to use some if and some product once you know the reasoning behind it and it will be really applicable to any workplace that you are situated in and that is our our project for work for this presentation thank you